The punitive expedition of Henry Sibley, reevaluating the success of his campaign. August 7, 1863. We had three desperate engagements with 2,300 Sioux warriors, in each of which they were routed and finally driven across the Missouri with a loss of all their subsistence. Our loss was small, while at least 150 savages were killed and wounded. H. H. Sibley, Brigadier General Commanding. It is relatively well known that Henry Hastings Sibley, former governor of Minnesota, former fur trader for the American Fur Company, was the military commander in charge of U.S. forces during the U.S.-Dakota War of 1862. Also, following the war, Sibley established and chaired the military commission that sentenced 303 men to death by hanging, which ultimately resulted in the execution of 38 Dakota and Mankato on December 26, 1862. But what is lesser known or lesser publicized is that the war did not end with the hangings in Mankato, and neither did Sibley's role in it. Following their defeat at the Battle of Wood Lake, the Dakota, many of whom did not participate in war, had to decide whether to flee their homeland or surrender themselves to U.S. forces. According to historian William Watts Falwell, about 1,500 of the Lower Sioux surrendered while about 800 scattered over the prairies between the Red River and the Missouri, concentrated for the winter on the Missouri River near Fort Rice. The Upper Sioux, or Santee, who numbered 4,026 people on the 1861 annuity rolls and lived along the upper half of the Minnesota River Valley, lingered near their villages before departing north to establish winter camp near Devil's Lake. Believing the Dakota who escaped to the west were renegades that would align themselves with the Yankton, Yankton Eye, and Teton, Sibley estimated that another Indian war was imminent. In October 1862, he sent a warning to his commanding officer, Major General John Pope, that 2,200 Sioux warriors would soon descend upon the Minnesota settlements. Pope agreed with Sibley's prediction and quickly drew up plans for a military campaign against the Santee Sioux, including the Yanktons, Yanktonais, and Teton in the Western Territories. According to the plan, which was approved by the War Department, the U.S. would send two advancing columns, one largely of infantry to move from the neighborhood of Fort Ridgely northward to Devil's Lake, the other mostly cavalry to ascend the Missouri Valley from Fort Randall to cut off a retreat beyond that river, and at length to diverge northeastward toward Devil's Lake. The column of infantry was to be led by Henry Sibley. The following summer, Sibley readied his column to head west from Camp Pope, located at the confluence of the Minnesota and Redwood Rivers. Stretching five miles long, the column departed on June 16, 1863, and consisted of 3,320 soldiers, 225 wagons, and several hundred cattle in order to furnish beef on the hoof. The column reached a point about 40 miles southeast of Devil's Lake on July 18, where they were informed by Red River buffalo hunters of a large group of Sioux who had recently left Devil's Lake and were camped about 75 miles to the west. Sibley took his column to the southwest and located the large encampment of Sioux on July 24th. Over the next week, Sibley and his soldiers pursued the Sioux, who numbered between 10,000 and 12,000 people, as they retreated toward the Missouri River. The Sioux engaged in battle with the U.S. soldiers on three separate occasions. The Battle of Big Mound on July 24th, the Battle of Dead Buffalo Lake on July 26th, and the Battle of Stony Lake on July 28th. Each time, the Sioux were repulsed by Sibley's artillery and forced to continue their retreat while Sibley continued his pursuit. On July 31st, after a majority of the Sioux had crossed to the west side of the Missouri River, Sibley ordered an end to the campaign. By driving the large encampment of Sioux across the Missouri, Sibley declared his expedition a complete success that would prevent any further attacks by Indians on the people of Minnesota. In a letter to his officers and soldiers dated July 31, 1863, Sibley stated, It would be a gratification if these remorseless savages could have been pursued and received for their crimes and barbarities such a full measure of punishment as they merited. But men and animals are alike exhausted after so long a march, and a farther pursuit would only be futile and hopeless. The main column returned to Fort Snelling on September 13th after traveling 1,039 miles in just under three months and having lost six men killed. Sioux losses have been estimated between 13 and 150, 
while they also endured the loss of a large amount of their provisions left behind in their retreat. General Henry Sibley received much praise for the results of his punitive expedition against the combined group of Santee, Yankton, Yanktonai, and Teton Sioux during the summer of 1863. Writing in 1864, historian Harriet E. B. McConkie declared, If we look to historic facts, we find no more successful campaigns against the Indians than have been those of General Sibley. The name of Henry H. Sibley will live on history's unsullied page. Posterity will laud him when those of his calumniators will be lost in the great whirlpool of oblivion. Looking back, it has become clear that Sibley's punitive expedition was fueled by the pervasive racist ideology of the time and sparked by chaos and panic following the U.S.-Dakota War. Those whom Sibley and his column pursued were not a war party, but a community of nomadic hunters that were not involved in the attacks against the Minnesota settlements the previous summer. It seems likely that the Sioux soldiers involved in battle against Sibley and his column were not engaging in war. Rather, they sought to delay the pursuit of a large column of sufficiently trained and armed U.S. soldiers in order to allow their women, children, and elderly to retreat to safety. Unfortunately for the Sioux, they lost dozens of lives and immeasurable amounts of goods and property in the process. Furthermore, it was only the beginning of a decades-long conflict with the United States.